نحمت رسول کریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Many people wrote me that a guy called himself apostate prophet is misleading Muslims and other non-Muslims about Islam on social media. This guy claims to be an ex-Muslim, but I will show you that he has no knowledge of Islam and he is following some mythologies and contrived answers to already circulating questions among non-Muslims. Unfortunately, I have no time to explore that guy in detail. However, because my friends insisted me to see what this guy is proliferating, therefore I have randomly sampled his videos and got three instances of his insane mistakes and his psychical state of knowledgelessness and stupidity. Please watch the first clip from his video about seven Earths. Number 56, seven heavens, and number 55, seven earths. The Quran says in multiple verses that there are seven heavens or seven skies above us, proving Allah's power. This can't refer to galaxies or solar systems, of which there are billions everywhere, not above us. It can't be universes, because by Muhammad's description, one heaven is not even big enough to reach the closest star. There would be millions of those heavens in our observable universe alone. Some modern apologists claim that this refers to the layers of atmosphere, but seven would be an inaccurate number, and the Quran says that stars are in the lowest heaven, and I don't bump into stars on my way to work. In reality, the Quran references an old myth whose oldest form we find among the Sumerians, who believed there were literally seven heavens above us, in which gods resided, and seven earths below us. The Quran also speaks of seven earths, but there are no earths below us. Some thought later this refers to seven planets, but the number of planets in our system is not seven, and there are millions of planets in the universe that we can see. The Quran seems to be adopting myths from older beliefs. Well, nowhere in Quran Allah mentioned about seven earths. In the words of Surah Allah, this apostate guy is referring to, you can see that Allah used plural word as samawat which means heavens and are seven in number however allah clearly mentions singular word al ars which clearly means one earth if allah is supposed to mention seven earths it was not difficult to add plural of al ars instead of using singular i know some muslim sources also misunderstood it but they cannot be provided as proof because here the misunderstanding is clearly grammatical in nature. I clarified here. Allah never used plural of al ars mean earth in whole Quran. However, Allah used plural for heavens as samawat. Now watch second clip about beard in Islam. Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Don't you find it interesting that so many Muslims have beards and that Islamic scholars, apologists and clerics seem to be abiding by an appearance policy? When you research further, you see how Islamic scholars harshly discuss the rulings on beards and shaving them, which of course is a very important aspect of life. So what is it about Islam and beards? Why do Muslims have beards? Well, briefly explained, according to the fundamental sources of Islam, and according to Sunni Islam and Shia Islam, it is obligatory to have a beard. Although the degree to which it is obligatory, and the shape of it slightly varies between Shia Islam and Sunni Islam, and also somewhat within the schools of Sunni Islam. If you're wondering why it is obligatory, I would say it is not too hard to guess. The reasons are primitive and tribalistic, of course. The obligation doesn't come from the Quran, just like many other obligations in Islam. It comes from the Hadith, which are reports quoting or describing Muhammad and his companions. Since the whole ruling about beards and mustaches has to do with tribalism. To look like a Muslim, or to be more accurate, to not look like non-Muslims. 
So it's funny that in the effort to look different from everyone else, Muslims basically caged themselves in a single appearance that they can't get out of. Congratulations, Muhammad. Very smart. You played yourself. Okay. Claim that the reasons of beard are tribalistic is a clear reflection of zero knowledge about beard. Associating beard with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Muslims only clearly reflects his abhorrence for beard and Muslims. This guy doesn't know that having a beard is the way of prophets. Here are a few examples. In Leviticus 21 verse 5, it's mentioned that priests must not make baldness on their head and shave off the edges of their beard, and in their flesh they don't make a cutting. So it was ordered by Prophet Moses to priest. It's the Torah. It's mentioned in Psalm 133 verse 2 as the good oil on the head coming down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. So what does it mean? Saul mentioned that Prophet Aaron had a beard. It's mentioned in Isaiah 15 verse 6. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. According to Christians, this verse prophesied Jesus. Although Jews are not agreed with this claim, however, if we accept it, then Jesus had a beard too. Or whomsoever this verse is talking about had a beard. It's mentioned in Ezra 9 verse 3, And at my hearing this word, I have rent my garment and my upper robe, and pluck out of the hair of my head and of my beard, and sit astonished. So Prophet Ezra had a beard too. It's mentioned in 2 Samuel 20 verse 9, And Job said to Amasa, Art thou in peace, my brother? And the right hand of Job laid hold on the beard of Amasa to give a kiss to him. So it's talking about Job and Amasa. They have beard too. Verses from Torah clearly tell that Prophet Moses, Aaron, Ezra, David, Solomon, Jesus, peace be upon them, and other prophets had beard. Prophet Moses also prohibited priests to cut edges of their beard. Associating beard with Muslims and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, only to defame Islam, it's not an appreciable practice. Meh. Hey, apostate guy. Beard is the way of prophets. Now watch his third clip about Hagar, the wife of Abraham, peace be upon him. Abraham lived far in the north where Hebrew people lived and built temples there and wandered in the wilderness far up there and had his family there. Hagar was Abraham's concubine, not wife. They were there are more differences than that, such as that Ishmael's mother Hagar, who was Abraham's handmaiden in the Bible, is suddenly directly Abraham's second wife in Islam. And these changes appear probably because Arabs assume that they are descendants of Ishmael, while Jews are descendants of Isaac. But more to that at another time. Hagar was concubine of Abraham, peace be upon him, or his handmaid. This is your knowledge of history, Mr. Apostate? Not Abraham's concubine, and not Abraham's handmaid, but of his wife Sarah's handmaid. Here are a few references from various versions of Genesis. It's Genesis 16, verse 3. So after Abram had been living in Canaan ten years, Sari, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. In the Genesis and LT version, it's mentioned, So Sari, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. Even if you see YLT version of Old Testament, you will find that Sarah gave Hagar to 
Abraham peace be upon him to be his wife so he married her and Ishmael peace be upon him was first legal child of Abraham peace be upon him so saying that Islam wrongly says that Hagar was Abraham's second wife contradicts with Genesis Torah Hagar was Abraham's second wife and it's true okay well it's ridiculous Arab assumed that they are children of Ishmael ridiculous you apostate guy you need to contact Rabbi Tovia Singer he will convince you that Arabs are really from the lineage of Ishmael yes a Rabbi will convince you got something in your upper story apostate guy here is the bonus the fourth instance watch this video about Huris as sex slaves wow in another part of the Quran it, it says indeed for the righteous is attainment gardens and grapevines and full-breasted companions of equal age and a full cup no ill speech will they hear therein or any falsehood wah, wah, wah. so uh, the Quran promises sex slaves isn't it ridiculous and stupid wow well Quran clearly mentioned that in Surah al dukhan verse 54 so shall it be and we shall wed them to black eyed hurries it's also mentioned in a tour verse 20 they will be reclining on arrayed couches and we will wed them to big eyed hurries so it's clearly mentioned in quran that hurries will not be sex slaves they will be wives wedded wives of the people who will be entered in paradise so the concept of sex slave has nothing to do here and i would like to mention that what is the concept of sex there would be no sex in paradise at all you must understand the islamic principle the islamic phenomena of sex sex or act of generation is necessary to have your children to grow your family however quran mentioned that innama amwalukum wa auladukum fitna it's mentioned in a taghabun verse 15 rather your possessions and children are a test so you must understand that children are a test and there would be no children and there would be no test in paradise because paradise is a result of the test muslim passed in this world therefore there would be no sex in paradise there would be no act of generation in paradise and there would be no newborn babies in paradise so all of viewers have seen how stupid and nascent this apostate guy is i would definitely recommend all to stay away from him stay blessed and free amanallah